In this video, I want to touch on something that's really interesting and really damn cool. And a lot of mathematicians were involved in this process, like Euler, Weierstrass, um, Legendre, Laplace, Sterling. And it's the factorial function. So let's recall what the factorial function is defined to be. N factorial is just, and for now, I'm going to use Z factorial for a reason you might see later. It's just a, another variable, right? We can say like a factorial, um, gamma factorial, it's just a number. So let's just use z factorial. z factorial is defined to be z times z minus one times z minus two, and then all the way to three times two times one. That's a very trivial definition of the factorial. And that gives us a way to compute it. So fa five factorial is equal to five times four times three times two times one. That evaluates 20 times 6, which is 120. And as you can see from this top graph, the factorial function is a discrete function that's only defined for positive integer values. That means that we cannot really just like draw a curve through these points. That's a bad curve, sorry. We cannot just draw a curve through these points and then say this is a factorial function that's um that, that, that's like an extension factorial function defined for real integer values, like real number values. We cannot just do that. What we have to do is we have to find a function that satisfies a very like interesting property. So let's recall that z factorial is equal to z times z minus one factorial. That's basically the recursive property of the factorial, right? That means that like something like five factorial is equal to five times four factorial, right? If we just basically like separate these two things out, that's kind of true. That's also a very trivial property. But what we want to do is to use this property and say that the extension of the factorial should also satisfy this property, right? So what we want to do, and also just notice that this factorial function grows faster than an exponential curve, that's really interesting because, as we all know, exponential curves are famous for how fast it grows, but in, uh, like a factorial function grows faster than it. I don't want to do too much other stuff right now, so let's just go to the extension of the factorial. We call this the gamma function, gamma of z. Let's look at this definition of gamma of z. Gamma of z is defined to be z minus 1 factorial, which is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, this is like an improper integral. It's already getting pretty interesting of t to the z minus one and then e to the minus t dt. I use t as the variable just because t is kind of like a dummy variable and we don't really treat t as some like variable like x, y. I don't want to confuse any other people. This is so interesting. And now we can see it's an integral. But what we want to do is, okay, so let's also notice that z, um, gamma of z is equal to, gamma of z plus 1, sorry, is equal to z factorial, which is also equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the z e to the minus t dt. Now, what we want to do in this video is to show that this property is satisfied with this gamma function. That means that what we want to prove is we want to prove that gamma of z plus 1 is equal to, that's a bad gamma, sorry. Gamma of z plus 1 is equal to z times gamma of z. Notice that this is equivalent to saying that z factorial is equal to z times z minus 1 factorial. Right? This is just an equivalent thing stating it. Alright, let's prove this. Let's start with the integral definition of the gamma function. And I mean, we haven't really derived any other expressions for the gamma function. So it's this integral and gamma of z plus one is t to the z e to the minus t dt. And what we want to do here is to perform an integration by parts. So we want to perform an integration by parts. And let's let u, the function we want to differentiate, equal to t to the z and dv, the function we want to integrate e to the minus t du sorry dt sorry and what we have here is if we differentiate and integrate the respective um, functions we have du is equal to by the power rule z times t to the z minus 1 dt and if we integrate dv well it's very simple right 
v is just equal to minus e to the minus t. Fantastic. Now we have these things. What we can do is just to use the integration by parts formula. Well, this implies that our gamma of z plus 1 is simply equal to, by integration by parts, we have v times u. So we have minus t to the z times e to the minus t evaluated from 0 to pi to zero to infinity don't don't forget the limits minus the integral from zero to infinity of du times v right so we have z times t to the z minus one and then we have a minus e to the minus t we can distribute that minus to the front giving us a plus we have e to the minus t dt fantastic and first of all let's look at this expression this expression if we evaluate it by the following limits, we simply have, all right, let's see. So we want, like, we want to notice that the exponential function and this um, polynomial. So these are both decreasing, right? The polynomial is a negative and the exponential function is decaying with a negative exponential on front. What that means that this is decaying faster than the polynomial. And if we go to infinity, then e to the minus t always de decreases faster than minus t minus t to the z this means that we're going to this this will like outweigh so if we evaluate them in the limit infinity what we get is we have this goes to e to the minus infinity so let's first look at e to the minus t where the limit of t goes to infinity well this is basically like the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over e to the t and we basically have 0 this goes to negative negative infinity but we said this grows faster right this grows much faster because it's an exponential function that means that 0 will outweigh like let me just say outweigh outweighs negative infinity all right this means that we have 0 times negative infinity but zero outweighs so we have zero as this thing and we want to minus the th limit evaluated at zero that gives us minus zero to the z times e to the minus zero right well let's first look at this this evaluates to zero and this evaluates to one so this is basically zero times one which is zero and this whole thing evaluates to zero and we have to plus this integral. And we can take, look, the z out front, right? So this is equal to z times this fantastic integral from t to the z minus one, e to the minus t dt. And fantastic, look at this. We have from zero to infinity, sorry, the integral from zero to infinity of t to the z minus one times e to the minus t dt. And look at this, this is just the gamma function. Uh, the gamma of z that means we can write this thing as z times gamma of z and now because equality is transitive or ie we can uh things that are equal to other things are always equal to other things whatever we have the gamma of z plus one from here is equal to this well we directly have z times gamma of z which is the recursive property we want to prove and hence Q QED. And this is very, like, this is a very important property that we are going to use and utilize in many other videos I want to do about the factorial function. So that's very interesting. Also, let's look at another, like, problem if we know about the factorial function. So let's evaluate this. So gamma of five, over, uh, gamma of five over two, all over gamma of one half. Okay, so let's look at this. How can we do this? Well, we can just use the recursive property which is derived a while ago. Well, gamma of z plus 1 is equal to z times gamma of z. Very important. That means that we can rewrite gamma of 5 halves equal to gamma of 1 plus 3 halves, right? Which is just equal to 3 halves times the gamma of 3 halves. Well, we can again write this as 3 halves times the gamma of 1 plus 1 half. I think everybody agrees, uh, agrees with me on that. And this is equal to, well, 3 halves times 1 half, and then we have gamma of 1 half. 
this evaluates to 3 over 4 gamma of a half. And in fact, we'll actually derive what is gamma of a half, and you'll be astounded by what is gamma of a half. Or as you can see, gamma of a, like gamma of a half is also um, equal to a half minus one factorial, which is just also equal to negative a half factorial. That means we also have like a function to help us evaluate negative values for the factorial. That's also really interesting. Whatever, we'll do that in the other video. But now we have this thing. That means we can plug our expression into this part, giving us three, three fourths gamma of a half over gamma of a half, which gives us these two cancel out three fourths or three quarters. This is so beautiful because we don't have like a really weird expression over here. All we can do is to use this recursive property the gamma function has and utilize it to evaluate these weird kind of um, problems. And you'll see that the gamma function is in fact more useful than only using this recursive property to figure out some kind of weird fractions. We can also use this to evaluate integrals to find out what problems in physics are to approximate asymptotically like a curve of the factorial function. And the factorial is used to describe a lot of things in nature. And I hope to see you in that part.